In this video, we're going to take a look at a new integration technique called integration by parts. And this is just going to be another tool in our tool belt that will help us do more integrals or more complicated integrals. Um, so he here's what it says, and then I'll, I'll explain it a little bit. So it says the integral of the product u times dv is going to equal u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so now first right off the bat, what is this used for? Well, integration by parts is really helpful when you're integrating something difficult that has a product, right? So when you have a product, we're going to think integration by parts. And it, it, right off the bat, we can see it says uh, the integral of u times dv. So uh, the u and the dv are going to be um, choices that we make based off of what our integral is. We're going to choose one term to be the u, one term to stand as dv. And based off of our choice, uh, using u and dv, we can find the rest of these guys on the right-hand side, and that'll be our answer. So um, I've got a lot of questions to answer about this guy. Um, before I get into the why it works or where did it come from or how to choose u or how to choose dv and all, all those natural questions we would have, let me, let me start just by showing you... Um, just how to do it with just a very basic example. So I'm going to do most of this stuff here. Uh, let's say we had the integral of x times e to the x. All right, it looks like a pretty harmless integral, but this one's actually pretty tough because it doesn't fit any of our known integral techniques. It's certainly not a basic integ integration technique like the power rule or sum indifference rule or anything like that. We don't have any good technique to integrate this. Uh, as you know, there's not nearly as many integral techniques as there are derivative techniques. For instance, there's not a integral version of the product rule. And so you and you certainly couldn't just integrate x and integrate e to the x. The closest thing we have to an integral version of the product rule is this guy called integration by parts. Okay, so I see a product here. That's what makes me think integration by parts. And then um, I'm going to work this one out slowly, and I'll, I'll explain you know how the algebra goes. Okay, so let me um, change screens here real quick. Okay, so here's our integral, and here I have up in the corner just a reminder of what integration by parts was. All right, so let's um, let's see what we've got here. All right, um, for this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and just tell you who's who. Uh, now I know your your natural question would be, well, Devin, how do you how do you know which one's u and which one's dv. We'll get into that later in the video, but just go with me for a minute. Um, I'm going to let u be x, and I'm going to let dv be the e to the x. Okay, and so in general, you're going to have to make a decision on who's who, okay, on which term is what. Okay, so we have an integral of x times e to the x dx, and I've made my decision, and again, we'll get into later as to how I knew to, to pick it in this order. And I'm just going to basically fill in the blanks. This will be equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. That'll be my answer. So um, I need to find both of those other things. So I've got u and dv, but how would I get du if I know that u equals x? Well, du would be the um, come from the derivative of this u, so it would be 1 dx and dv equals e to the x, if I retrieved the original v, we would get e to the x. The integral of e to the x is also e to the x. So I have all one, two, three, four different types of terms I might need. It's literally plug and chug. So we've got u times v, so I have x times e to the x, minus the integral of v du, v du. So here's v, here's du. We have e to the x dx, okay? So in some sense, this is this is my answer here. Now, you might have a, a very natural question. You say, well, Devin, hang on just a minute. We were trying to do this integral, but your answer has another integral in it? That, that just doesn't sound right. Well, again, yeah, that, that's going to seem a little weird at first, but here's what's going on. This original integral is obviously pretty hard because we didn't know how to do it, and so we're learning this new technique. It turns out that um, if you choose u and dv wisely, the integral that you get on the right-hand side should be easy or at the very least easier, right? And so look at what we have here. Um, sure, x times e to the x was difficult to integrate, 
but after integration by parts, I get this guy. And yeah, I can integrate e to the x. There's no additional x there. So the uh, extra integral you get on the right-hand side should be you know, very doable. You shouldn't have too much trouble with that. Okay, so our final answer is x times e to the x minus integral of e to the x is just e to the x plus c, right? So this is our indefinite integral. And now what, what does this answer mean exactly? Well, the same as what it's always meant. This guy is the indefinite integral of x times e to the x, which means, and you can check me on this, if you take this guy's derivative, it should be this, right? It should be this if you differentiated this guy with a product rule and an exponential rule and all that good stuff. So I would encourage you to do that on your paper. Take this guy's derivative and verify for yourself that you really do get x times e to the x. And so it gives us a way of integrating products that we never had before. So that's why you know uh, integration by parts is, is so extremely helpful. All right, now on to some other questions. Um, the, the big one standing right now is, you know, Devin, how did you know um, that this was the u and this was the dv? And matter of fact, if you had chosen the other way around, if you had said u equals e to the x and dv equals x, the problem would have gotten harder, not easier. And so how, how do you know, you know, how do you know who's, who to choose as who? Well, here's, here's the big thing. Notice um, you have a u and a dv, but you need or you're going to need a du and a v. Well, that, that hints at, at some criteria for u and dv. Let, let me show them to you real quickly. Okay, um, I just made up a, a list of quick little notes here. All right, u should be easy to differentiate because you're going to need du. Uh, and if possible, we would like it to also get smaller or simpler so that this integral on the end isn't so bad. That's why I chose u to be x, right? Because the derivative of x is 1, which got smaller or simpler. And I didn't choose e to the x because the um, derivative of e to the x just stays e to, e to the x. So that was my driving force behind the, the last example. All right, uh, dv on the other hand should be easy to integrate, all right? Because if we choose if we choose dv and the integration by parts, we don't have any dv's, we have v's. So for instance, dv would never be natural log of x. Why? Because I can take the derivative of natural log of x, one over x, but you know we rarely ever talk about integrating natural log of x. It's not a very easy or typical integral to do. So that kind of hints at what should be what. Um, next little comment I would make is that, um, you know, over here I said that this integral is easier, but it might just so happen that it's not doable in one next step. Uh, it may happen, and, and we see lots of examples like this, that this integral that you get after integration by parts requires integration by parts again. It's very, very common, and uh, we'll, we'll have a video example on one of those uh, coming up soon. All right, and the last thing I would say to you is um, students have a bad habit, and uh, you know I see this every semester, that once they learn integration by parts or they learn new substitution or they learn a new trick or a new technique, they suddenly think that every integral on earth is integration by parts or u substitution. Uh, keep your mind open and treat every integral as a new integral and, and ask yourself, why would this be integration by parts or why would this be u substitution? Because it might just be a basic rule, uh, some indifference rule or, you know, something, something along those lines. So resist the temptation. If you do five integration by parts problems in a row, don't assume that number six is also integration by parts. It's a very, very uh, common habit that students uh, get into. Okay. Um, Last thing I'll leave you with is where does this come from? Because right now it just looks like a magic formula. You have an integral of a product, you do these things and out pops the answer. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of those type of things. I, I like seeing where things are coming from, uh, as I'm sure you probably do as well. So let, let me just explain real quickly where this is coming from. It's actually quite easy to understand. Uh, if we start with a product, u times v, and we want to take his derivative, then this would be the good old fashioned um, product rule. 
And so just bear with me with the notation. It's not going to look as common as you're used to, but you'll see what I'm what I'm getting at here. The derivative of u times v would be um, the derivative of u, uh, or derivative of the first, times the second, plus the first, times the derivative of the second. So you see what I did there? I basically just did the product rule. All right, now don't worry so much about why I'm doing this, but just agree with me that I would be allowed to. Um, if I felt like it, these are equal to each other, could I not now integrate both sides? So if I integrate the left side and I integrate the right side, not really sure why we do that right now, but just go with me for a minute. Um, let's see what this would turn out to be. Well, the integral of the derivative with those being inverse operations would cancel out. And so on the left hand side, we would get u times v again, right? What we started with. And then we would have the integral of I'll write it as v du, just so it's ordered a little better, plus the integral of u dv. And so if you ever have an integral that has a product, it doesn't really matter who you solve for, I'll just choose this one here. Um, if you have an integral that has a product, such as the integral of u dv, well then what would this guy be equal to? Well he would be equal to u times v, right, this guy, minus the integral of v du. So how about that? We just derived the uh, integration by parts formula. It, it really is, in a sense, the integral version of the product rule. It's about, you know, it's about the closest that we have. So hopefully that makes integration by parts a little bit clearer for you. Um, if you'd like to see more of these videos and some examples, check out my website, fireflylectures.com.